Did you hear that Harry is going to be storming Area 51? As an immigrant, that seems like an especially <laughs> bad idea. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode 160 of No Putts Given. Today, this is the episode sponsored by Kirkland Signature of Costco. <laughs> um, uh, it's funny because people actually think that's true. Yeah, I heard some guy that goes by the name of Butthole or Buttsy, um, something like that, <laughs> said that we were sponsored by Costco and, you know. Quick, quick Google search tells you Costco doesn't advertise, but anyway, you know, do your homework. Maybe just, next just time. want to tell the truth, you know. That's just <laughs> want to get the truth out there. All right. Well, today we're covering the new Kirkland golf ball, the new Kirkland putter. Yep, we said it, and it's coming. An umbrella test done in the hurricane, and uh, I think and Tony just bought five reams of paper from Staples for twenty dollars. And uh, hell yeah, <laughs> it's the little things that please, please him. <laughs> so let's get it. No Putts Given is powered by My Golf Spy, the most extensive reviews in golf. Before you buy, My Golf Spy. Nine million readers do it every year. Check us out. All right, so let's get to the new Kirkland golf ball test. Uh, yesterday, we were out at Bayville Country Club in Virginia Beach. Great place. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, so everybody spoke really highly of that. So thank you, Bayville, for having us out yesterday. And we tested the 2019 Kirkland four piece versus the 2016 Kirkland four piece versus the Titleist Pro V one X as a four piece control. So a lot of interest, a lot of people emailing, asking how this ball performs. Let's get to the performance first and the durability second performance wise, things look pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the consistent, yeah, the, the, so Ball speeds were up by a mile an hour or so, on average of um, all the testers, and but the spin rate was higher too. So Tony, what kind of ball, in your opinion, does that look like from a comparable standpoint for people to you know wrap their head around? Yeah, so so based on what we've seen so far, and you know we're gonna try and get some compression measurements on this. Hopefully, at some point we we spin up a ball lab of our own and have a, a compression gauge and a whole lot of other stuff. But to answer the immediate question. Certainly what we're seeing suggests a higher compression ball, so probably firmer total construction. Um, but it also looks, I would describe it as kind of a high spin across the board, so a little spinny off the dryer, high spin off an iron, high spin off a ledge. Uh, and if I were to just kind of based on that character the characterization of what we've seen so far without going through the data in complete and total detail, kind of reads a lot like a Volvic S4. And I'm not saying they're the same ball. We've cut them open. We know they're not the same ball. They come from different factories. But from a performance perspective, that seems to be the most comparable at this point. And we'll know more once we really crunch the data and go through it. But that's based on what I've seen so far. That That's kind of what I'm looking at. So if you go back to our ball test and look at kind of the, the launch and spin charts, I think that's probably going to be the closest one based on what we know now. All right. So overall, from a subjective standpoint, you know, what what did you uh, you're a great golfer all american golf former all american golfer you know uh you're particular about your golf ball that you play what did you think of this golf ball i mean i like to i like a little bit of a f softer feeling golf ball um and it felt like that i mean it was one of those balls that you you felt like you you can really attack your chip shots around the greens cuz it's soft and that's what i like that's what i prefer so i can check it up there and and be a bit more aggressive and it definitely felt like that and i definitely so softer thought, feel overall the cover feels a little softer yeah i mean i have a yeah i have i have um i have a weird uh, experiment when i when i when i look at balls and just to see how soft they are i, I kind of put it in my mouth and bite down to see how i don't know i do it this one i pretty much went through the whole cover it was that soft. It was like an oh, old Bellotta. Ooh, you K9'd right through it, huh? Yep, I got my fangs. Which we'll get to the durability of the cover in a minute. But overall, ball speeds seem to be so far. We'll run the numbers. Full test results will be published next week for everybody out there. But for right now, just quick glance, ball speed seems to be up. Spin seems to be up. Carry seems to be up so far. So far, yeah. Comparative to the other two balls in the test. So that's performance. But let's put up performance to the side for a second and talk about... 
an issue that we have seen, not just in our own testing, but a lot of people that are out there that are getting the ball in now for the very first time and getting their first few strikes with it, first couple rounds with it. And that is a durability issue with a cover that I haven't seen since a Titleist Bellata. So what do you think about that, Tony? I mean, multiple people are sending us pictures with these smiley faces that I, I've never seen a ball in modern era, like since I've, you know, the last 10, 20 years, cut like this 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 easily. Yeah, it's uh, so you go back to the article we, we held off, we published on Tuesday, we pushed it to, to make room for, for the new Cleveland stuff. But um, yeah, I sort of, uh, knowing what we knew at the time, I made an educated guess that the cover was going to be the problem with this ball. Now, of course, I thought it was going to be a problem because of thickness. If you look at the, the, the past urethane balls that have come out of that factory, the cover has been really thick. Urethane, really thick urethane covers. This one is, is actually thinner. It looks to be, we haven't put calipers on it yet, but it looks to be just a hair thicker than a Pro V1, for example. So in that realm, but, but my God, do they have an issue with the cutting? Uh, just splits, right? And not, sometimes you see balls split on the seam. So you think, all right, there was a bonding issue when the two layers came together. Uh, but we're seeing this ball cut literally all over the ball in addition to, I would describe as, as excessive scuffing. So, you know, long story short, it looks like they have some sort of chemistry problem, whether that's with the, with the, col- the polyurethane itself or, or with the bonding between the, the, the cover and the casing layer. It's, it's an issue, right? A golf ball should not do this, right? You shouldn't, as, as one guy who put it in play, say he burned through six over the course of, of 18 rounds in terms of just cutting them wide or 18 holes, rather cut six balls over 18 holes like that. That absolutely should not happen. Uh, it definitely can't happen at $45 a dozen. And even at $15 a dozen, you won't find another ball with this kind of durability issue. So, so let me ask you a question. You know, I, I, some of the people out there will go for a dollar a ball, right? Who gives a shit? So what do you say to that? Like a dollar a ball that performs well? Yeah, I, it, it really depends on the math, right? Uh, the long math and how many balls you lose. If you lose six balls around. Yeah, maybe the math works. But if you're a guy who plays one or two balls around, typically, if that, and you get one round out of a Titleist or one round of Bridgestone or sometimes two or three out of a out of a Titleist or a Bridgestone or a Shrixon or something with, you know, legitimate cover durability, and you're burning through six around with a Kirkland, the math doesn't add up, right? At that point, you're actually spending more on a Kirkland than you would a box of premium leading market balls. Yeah, so, so obviously this... This is the first batch, right? So obviously not a good batch so far from what we've seen. I'm sure that they could potentially get some of this fixed in in later batches, but this is a, this is a problem because they had they had a real uh, unicorn on their hand with that original Kirkland. That obviously this is not that, but they're playing off that a little bit. You know, they're they were oh for sure yeah, and so the problem is going to be. What is the average golfer going to think? Is the average golfer that comes into Costco going to think, oh, man, I've heard about this Kirkland ball. I'm going to buy this. And even if you've heard that they came out with a new ball and know it to be different, are they going to know about these issues? I think they're going to find out real quick if they put them in play. Um, well, here's, here's a difference as well is if it splits off a drive or whatever, it, it, whenever it splits and you still got a hole to play, you're still playing that hole, you can't technically change that ball out, right? No, you can. That's, you can. If your ball is if your ball is legitimate. Oh, that's damaged. right. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, but, but that's that's an interesting part. But if you don't see it, if it's underneath, uh, well, that blue shows through pretty. Right, but I mean, if that's unfortunately underneath, and you and it's on the fairway. Well, we've we've cut open some, and what I've noticed too is just the cover itself. I don't know many other balls that we've cut open where I can literally split it in half and then pull the outside cover right off. That's not supposed to happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually, so if, if you're dealing with a thicker cover, especially if you're dealing with a Ionomer slash Sterling ball, you can usually wedge a butter knife, for example, between between the, the core and the, and the cover, and it, it separates pretty quickly. And with thicker covers, generally, they, they separate. I don't want to say quickly. You kind of have to work your way around and deeper and around and deeper, but yeah, if you can practically pull it off with with just your finger, it's yeah. There's there's some sort of bonding issue. And what I would add here, and this 
this is a potentially interesting ripple, right? As if you, let's say it's a chemistry problem and they have to change the formulation of that cover a little bit to, to get it to either stiffen up or, or do what needs to be done so that it doesn't tear. At that point, technically, it's not the same ball that they submitted to the USGA. And I have a feeling that's the kind of thing that's going to go unnoticed and nobody's really going to care about. But technically, that is a change to the ball. I doubt they'll resubmit. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the guy that's buying the Kirkland ball are one of two people. One that just walks into Costco and he's looking for five gallons of mayonnaise and uh, you know a year's worth of TP and goes, oh, shit, you know, Costco balls on the end cap, right? I'm going to grab these because they're fifth, you know, a dollar a ball. Or it's the guy from that's a gearhead that's heard about it through a site like ours. And I think, I don't know. I, I just think they're going to continue to sell this ball. I don't even know if they're going to fix the problem. I don't, I don't know if the, uh, the average golfer would care that much. The one that shoots like a 90 to 100, he knows he's just out there and he's just out there to have fun. And there, there are segments of, of golfers, including good golfers, who who feel like that they're being overcharged by the big ball manufacturers, right? Like Titleist shouldn't be charging forty five, fifty dollars a dozen, or Bridgestone shouldn't be charging what they charge, and and Shrixon shouldn't charge what they charge, and and the idea that a ball doesn't have to cost this much, it's only because they play tour pay tour players that they they get to this level. And look, yeah, Titleist could sell a ball for less and still make money, and and the same is probably true for everybody, but. There is sort of this this revolving door effect, if you will, where yeah, Titleist Titleist sells more balls because they have a degree of popularity. That popularity is due in part to tour players. That brings in more money, which they can then invest in machines that make a higher quality golf ball. Machines that that put a ball that does a cover on a ball without it tearing. Um, if we look at kind of just the one cutaway we showed at that uh, of the, the new Kirkland ball, we looked at that and we saw, all right, the, the casing layer is not just uneven, but it's almost to a degree and a part slightly, slightly football shaped, right? We saw a place where it looked like it was kind of pinched. So that's, that's the, the glitch, possibly the glee bar machine that's supposed to make the ball perfectly round, not doing its job, right? So like... Again, more money means you can invest in better tooling to create a better product, and, and around and around it goes. And so, yeah, you, you can pay less and get a ball, but look, we've seen it. There is a legitimate quality standard that is difficult to achieve. And in my mind, you know, if, if having the same ball or damn near the same ball for every shot, every round is important to you, then yeah, you, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to pay for Titleist or Bridgestone or or Shrixon, or one of those hot brands to get that. You're not going to get that at $15 a freaking dozen. At the end of the day, it curious. comes down to this for me. Like, are there balls that perform as good as this for close to the same price, right? Yes, there's Ennisys, there's Snell, there's Bridgestone, there's Shrixon, there's balls out there that don't have this bad of a durability issue that perform similarly or just as good, right? So why? Yeah, and it's, I, think, I think with... With golf balls, we need to start talking about them in two different way, ways, right? You, you have a performance specification, right? So, And that's where you, you say things like, well, hey, I, I tried this new ball and it performs as good or better than a Pro V1, right? And what, you know, that that's sort of a for me thing. That becomes a, well, the launch characteristic I saw, the spin characteristic, the speed characteristic, right? For me, those were, they matched a, a top ball. But then you have a quality specification, which is is things like, you know, is the core centered? Are the layers concentric? Is it is the ball freaking round? Um, does the cover cut like butter? Right? Like these are these are not necessarily performance specifications. These are quality specifications, and that is a lot. At the factory, it's a lot harder to achieve a higher quality specification, and unfortunately for a golfer for better or worse and sometimes it doesn't matter right we acknowledge this it's it's much more difficult to notice a quality specification well here's what i've learned like since, since we dropped the bomb i guess you want to call it of the kirkland original ball test and we got inundated with phone calls of people in the industry that wanted to get in the golf business it looked like something so just quick easy and fun to get into right like oh my god any i can put my logo on a ball 
and make some money, right? That's what it seemed to be right after the test. The amount of calls and emails we got. I, after all the stuff, not only that we've seen in the last year or so, but that you're finding on all the shipping reports from overseas, <laughs> I would never- I, How I spend my days. Yes. I would never want to get into the golf ball business because even balls that, so talk about that really quickly. Like Costco basically takes over a plant now, right? Kind of owns a foundry that was not owned by Costco to some degree before. And that now is making other golf ball companies that were having their product made at that foundry have to go to a different tier ball manufacturer, not because they wanted to or chose to, but because they almost have to now because they can't just get out of the golf ball business now. Yeah, there, I mean, there are certainly, I would say sort of capacity issues and, and some of those capacity issues are, are forced. So if you look at one of the stories that we heard quite a bit, when, when the first Kirkland kind of took off, one of the responses was, so that, that first Kasich ball came out of Nassau, which is a factory that in addition to producing the, the majority of MTB balls, the, the MTB red being the exception, um, but for Snell, uh, produces the cores, basically everything but the cover for the most part for, for the tailor-made TP5 ball, right? And so what happened, what we saw was as that, that Costco ball sort of hit the market and emerged in popularity, Taylor made was like, all right, we're, well, you know what? We're going to, we're going to ramp up production here. We're going to, we're going to make more balls. We're right going to move you to the back of the line, basically. Exactly. Yep. You get to the back of the line. And that's why you saw not only Costco having fulfillment issues, but, but Snell had some inventory issues as well. And you see the same thing right over at, at Foremost, where occasionally Vice and uh, Encore, who aren't probably the biggest customers there, get pushed to the back of the line and they have some inventory issues as well. And what's happening is the big guys are starting to exert pressure on these factories. And what it's doing is taking these these smaller direct-to-consumer brands and forcing them away from the tier one factories to tier two factories where, you know, if we're, we're being brutally honest, the quality probably isn't as good. And, and that makes it very challenging for somebody who wants to get into the ball business, who understands like, yeah, I'm not going to design my own ball, but I can I can get a pretty good ball from a factory and develop a brand around it. It makes it increasingly harder to get a pretty good or really good ball, uh, especially if you want to maintain inventory and have something you can sell. And so, I mean, the latest example, right? So we're seeing indications anyway that Cut, for example, got its balls from what is now SM Parker, which is making the, the balls for Costco. Uh, they're shifting, they're shifting some of their production, if not all of their production. I'm guessing it's the new ball, right? That they just started selling. That's probably I haven't seen the box. Don't say this is absolute, but that's probably coming from the factory in Taiwan, which is now shipping a lot of product to Cut. So you're you're seeing brands shift from factories as a result of major OEMs and then something like a Costco, which has major buying power and can and is willing to buy a lot of balls. So if you want to get into the golf ball business, you might want to Don't. think again. Um, it's not yeah. as easy as it once was and will ever be probably again. Uh, so back to just, you know, capture the essence of what we've seen so far. A lot of hype for good reason, around the new Kirkland ball because the old Kirkland ball was a really good yeah, golf ball cool. for really cheap. And the new good, the new Kirkland golf ball does seems to perform pretty well so far. Well, like I said, full results, ne results next if week. If you need more spin. Yeah, full results next week on the Kirkland ball test, but the cover issues is a non-starter for me. You know, I don't, you know, that's, it's up to you to do whatever you want, but for me, it's a non-starter. So that's that. I would that. describe it as a fucking dumpster fire uh, how does that okay yeah. yeah i think matt can make a graphic for that put it lightly if you want to <laughs> <laughs> so uh moving on to another kirkland or sorry another costco kirkland signature product that might actually move the needle uh it's not it that the potential. ball didn't and tony's shaking his head but they will be from what we've heard release a putter a let's see let me get the details on this for everybody so it will be released 303 stainless right yep so it's going to be released this holiday and it will be a milled face 
303 stainless putter. The price right now looks like it's going to be $149. And the reason why it's even that high, it sounds like, is because of a tariff issue. Thank you, Donald Trump. Uh, it's going to be available online and in store. Small batch to start off with, testing the waters. There will be adjustable weights on the sole with additional weight kits. And third, Included, right? Yep. And a mid slim super stroke grip. And, uh, you know, so what are you, what's your first thoughts when you hear that? I mean, I, see, I saw the picture that you posted. Um, and it looks, I mean, we discussed it. It looks like a, like a cross between an Odyssey and Scotty. Like a Scotty. Yeah. So I know both could putters. Yeah, so, so it'd be interesting. I'm really looking forward to actually putting in a test. I mean, if you were going to come out with a putter, wouldn't you make it look like a hybrid between an you Odyssey and Scotty? Make it look Scotty? good because pe- a lot of people go on looks. Yeah. Um, these days, so. And small, small case here of data, but the one person that we know that's tried it uh, already said that it felt good, looked really good, sounded good, uh, and this was coming from somebody that supposedly collects putters and knows putters pretty well. Positive subjective feedback, yeah, but then. We've we've obviously had putters that say, "Yeah, I love this looks, love the feel," and then perform terribly. Do you think the guy that's going to buy the Kirkland Costco signature putter cares how it performs in most wanted testing? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you don't know. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm actually surprised they're not calling it the the Cody Samarin. <laughs> Cody <Cotty> Samarin. <laughs> Cody Samarin. Is, yeah. this, is this a middle finger to Titleist for them suing Costco, you think? Uh, maybe. Like, look, it's 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 one or two things or both, right? Like, if if you're going to make a putter, and, and rumors of a wedge, too, that is... So we, we've heard the, the putter described as Scotty Cameron Newport-like. We've heard the wedge that's that's likely coming as well described as, as like a Vokey. So, uh, yeah, I mean... If, if you're going to get into a, the putter business, you probably should make one that looks like a Scotty Cameron because that's, in terms of at least dollar share, the biggest putter on the market right now. And if you're going to make a wedge, you should probably base it on a Vokey because that's that's the biggest seller on the market now. And, you know, if you, you've had some past issues with Titleist lawsuits and you're looking for a subtle way to, you know, there you go. Why not? Why not sell a putter for 149 bucks that that looks Scotty Cameron ish, and if, if you can sell two or three wedges for 99 bucks as well, that are are Vokey driven. Why not? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they're actually if it's a middle finger or not. I think it's just. I mean, two birds. If I if I was gonna if I was gonna have a putt, but I like make a putter or a wedge, I'm gonna base it on the best one, and just so happens to be. The Scotty Cameron is a good looking player. Yeah, devil's like, advocate. Yeah. They could have came out with the ball as a testing ground. You see what happened with that and gone, should we mess around in the golf space? All right, we'll start with a ball, right? Uh, then obvious, the well, obvious the obvious, next two things are glove from, a, you know, generally speaking from the people that want to jump into the golf industry, if you're going to jump in, you jump in with a glove, a wedge, and a putter, right? They started with the ball um, successfully. And now maybe they're just naturally moving to the putter and wedge. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, they're just going to be, they're just given what the consumer wants and looks when they look at it. Because if they look at the likes of it and it's for a good price, why not buy it? Yeah, I mean. You know, the, the only thing with a, and, and again, right, it, it could be a different type of consumer. And, and I think sort of the design here may play a role as well. But you also have to consider and what's the impact if, if they're selling their putter at 149 they're still what 50 bucks or so more expensive than the tommy armors that have tested well for us uh i don't know how much they're making in that space anymore but cleveland used to have putters you know 199 119 wilson saddles in that price range as well so my point is there are there are products from legitimate golf brands already on the market now for less than what what this will sell for as opposed to the golf ball where it was like a a strong performer that was really what legitimately 50 50 percent less than any competitor the readers of just my golf spy that have followed along with the ball thing i would be willing to bet the putter sells out in probably less time than the ball oh yeah no yeah oh if you're asking me if i think it's going to sell out oh shit yeah but i i just don't know if it if there should be the same type of excitement there was with the golf ball, which again, like I said, 50% less than 
than probably the, the closest. Well, when I hear that, when I hear they're coming out with a putter, and I generally get a little excitement, like, oh yeah, man, do it. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's disruptive for sure. Yeah, and we like disruptive. What is your Twitter bio? I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> Serial <laughs> poker of hornet's nest or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, Kirkland is new ball is out testing next week. Results coming you know, uh, next week. Cover issues, new putter, possibly new wedge. So a lot going on with Costco Kirkland signature in the golf space. So watch out for that. Uh, moving on to the next thing. And that is the umbrella testing. Very exciting. <laughs> this is, yeah, this and... Do you have, the, do you, do you uh, have, I know he's not here today, but do you have one you could open inside just to make Sam nervous? Yeah, that's true. Nervous? I do not have one right here, no. Yeah, for everybody that doesn't know, Sam is majorly... Uh, he won't walk under ladders. He won't open umbrellas inside. Yeah. He won't even touch an umbrella that's been inside. Yeah, so he's got an issue with that. He freaks out when the umbrellas get opened indoors. But um, on a serious note, you know, umbrellas, we definitely found a big difference between bad ones and good ones. So. Yep. You know, Again, Harry, tell me what are the three, two or three things that you saw in testing that make a bad umbrella? Um, I mean, you have to look at the handle first off. First off, I mean, it doesn't seem like a big thing, but if it doesn't it's, fit your it hand, sounds like it seems ridiculous. <laughs> honestly, right, it does. But if it if if tell him why it's not ridiculous. All right, Tony, Harry. here you go. This is why it's not ridiculous. All right, try and wrap this around your head. All right. <laughs> Basically, right. if your if your handle is not fitting your hand properly, if if you're playing around and it's um, windy, and it's windy, you're gonna get a lot of pain in your hand and your wrist because your hand is not molded to the uh, handle. Like, he's laughing, but this is true. I've tested it. Um, so that's one. Another one is if you have a double canopy, you need uh a, a vent for when the wind goes inside and i come think out. that's the more important one yes yeah. big gust of wind comes up comes inside the umbrella for those out there that don't know usually they're double layered like a double canopy right or yeah a canopy with like the vents coming out so it connects it the problem is if it's a gust of wind which usually it is it needs to be able to let out a mac the most air possible for the umbrella not to either fold and invert or fly out of your hand if you have a bad handle tony if you don't have a good grip it's coming out of your hand so who <laughs> there's companies that have created that second vent that actually is pretty ingenious. They basically have bungee cords. Yeah, so it's, they call it like, a, um, I think it was, a, I mean, Shed Rain's got a great example of this. Gus Busters has a great example. Basically, the, the wind comes inside and then they have like vents that look like uh, raindrops. Um, like, you know, just blow up a big raindrop. It looks like that. Um, and it goes in and then when it expands, the top upper layer... Um, canopy expands the bungee gets obviously stretched, stretched and the um, the air exits from there some have double canopies and have a venting system but it doesn't go through <laughs> but this is exactly my job this is no it's an important this is what important, i go through yeah. and it's it can get tedious <laughs> it can right. get tedious so the name the two because we had a tie this year yeah. right the two best ones okay. and the best value. What do we got for golfers? So if you're going to go out there and not buy like a logoed umbrella that has Titleist or Ping or Callaway on there and you just want the best umbrella. It sounds like if you're going to buy a logoed umbrella, you should probably buy the Titleist because it's made by one of the two brands Harry's about to mention. Yes. Bingo. So the winners that um, this year that's going to be announced today is Gus Buster again and Shed Rain, the Vortex XL. All right, so Gus Buster is a no-brainer at this point, right? Three years in a row, yeah. Gus Buster numero uno. But we got a new tie for first, and that's from a company called... Shed Rain. Shed Rain. Yep, um, and it, uh, they're, they're no shits. They are good. They if, are very, If you're looking for the technological leader in umbrellas, I would say Shed Rain is where it's at, which might be why Titleist umbrellas now are Shed Rain. Yep, Titleist have outsourced their uh, umbrellas, and if you buy a, the new Titleist umbrella, you know you're going to get a good umbrella and they added a uv protection under there as well so you get the uv light i've well. never understood that like if it's raining but the handle's not great you said yeah it's not the best but when the data adds up that's what comes out actually do you want to know what the take the two exact umbrellas the titleist well not exact and the shed rain 
why did the shed rain or the titles not perform as well from a uh, numbers standpoint versus the real shed rain? The handle. The handle, Tony. It's all about the handle. You know, I, I think we're at the point where we're ready to say, like, look, you absolutely need to be fit for your umbrella. Hey, <laughs> I think custom fitting is Custom key. fitting is the way forward. But there's there's a really good one that's uh, um, best value, and that's from Athletico. It's a 68-inch um, umbrella. $20. $20 Athletico. Automatic um, opening, very good. Um, again, if you're a value guy. So look, the traffic is going to be huge, Like, so hurry up and get there. But when you hear this announcement of the umbrella, hurry up and get to my golf spot before our servers crash, because if you don't, I'm promising you, the site will be down. This could be bigger than the drive. You know test. what? I, so this is a true story. Like we're joking about umbrellas, like like it is no big deal, and it's probably not not the, the top of at the top of anybody's must buy equipment list. But no joke, there is a guy at, uh, that I play against in the Tuesday night league at McGregor. That every time I see him, like it started out with him coming to me and going, "Hey." All umbrellas, especially on push carts, are crap. I've got a great idea for an umbrella. I'm willing to give it away. And now every time he sees me, he's like, where are we at with this, this umbrella thing? Like, like supposedly, I'm, I'm actively working on this. And and no joke, I have actually saw, thought this through. And I have in my mind, like, the idea for the perfect umbrella on a golf cart. And I think we could probably produce it for probably 120 bucks per so yeah, I mean, it's yeah. I, I think we can make this happen. Um, you know what? But, I got, yeah. Is it is it the idea where you have a, a hat and then you have an umbrella attached to your hat? But it's not just no, no, doesn't no, just cover. Like, so imagine imagine like this this massive wide spread. Don't right? give so away your eye, Tony. No, no, I'm gonna stop you right there. This is where, this That's is trade secret, man. Don't give that up to everybody. You you haven't even put it out there yet. It could be a most wanted winner next year. What's it, what? Your 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 umbrella. I'm telling you though, like massive. I'm if somebody else wants to make it. I'm happy. Like I'm because I'm. All right, I'm shed not rain. Listen it. up. It's just like a force field. He's talking about. <laughs> like I, no, seriously, and, and I'm like I, I thought about like shaft material. I'm like I'm like shit. I gotta get Fujikura involved in this, and 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 like this comes imagine, from the like, guy that just said the handle the top, doesn't right? fucking matter. Because here's here's the big problem with umbrellas, right? So he's getting real passionate. Water drips off the side, so mm -hmm. you need something to collect the water and presumably drink. route it down and through the center of the shaft, through the cart, and directly onto the ground. Like this is this is like an intense. What about if it comes through the middle and then you can drink it through a little straw, or or get into a water bottle? Oh, right? how about bingo? Here's here's a go. How about you have you have that the umbrella, and then you have gutters that fall that come up on the side, yeah, so you exactly. have a gutter. You need some sort of gutters. Gutter thing, but it, just, just, just but have a needs, gutter. It needs to drain at ground level so it's not dumping on you or your cart or your equipment. Oh. Like it, you need to get it, funnel it all the way down to the ground. I'm telling you, obviously, because this guy keeps hassling me about it, I've put way too much thought into this. And and ultimately, really, all I want in life is the chili cheese burrito back at Taco Bell. Anyway, so all right. So can you get on SharkTank.com and apply, lost Tony, our to place. get on Shark Tank? Shark Tank, yeah. I think they. He just gave I think up a million dollars. Let's get a prototype out there, Tony, and let's see if it sells. My guess is no. My guess is one guy will buy it. Look, people people joke us about testing umbrellas and ball retrievers because I can understand where they're coming from, but at the end of the day, you know, it's I, nonsense. But yeah, it's important. At the end of the day, it's not. Yep. yep. And and the handle is a big part of that, Tony. <laughs> and the handle is really important. Hey, but, if you don't want to get off right so you can keep playing golf, there you go. Especially up in New York. Yes. So and then I'm going to get a shitty handle so I never have to play again. <laughs> anyway, Harry and everybody put a lot of work in the umbrella test and the shed rain, Gus Buster and Athletico would be the three choices. Check out the uh, website before it surges and you know goes down. Most important question, are you going to consult with Harry when you come out with your umbrella on the handle design? Uh no. No, you're gonna you're it's, gonna it's, no. you're not gonna use. I, I, it's gonna be a flop then. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. I'm. I'm telling you no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to like one of the major grip companies, and we're gonna really sort this out. Like I said, I'm. You gonna, don't. You don't want to pay me. Uh, he's rights. gonna get golf pride to put a, a grip on an umbrella. 
So up next is a pretty cool opportunity that we have almost every week now on my Goss Buy, and that is member testing. Uh, we mentioned it a couple weeks ago, I think, on a No Putts Given episode. And basically every week on Fridays, if you check my Goss Buy or the forum, we have an opportunity for you not to take our word for it, but test it on your own. And that's everything from Callaway drivers to ping irons to junior sets to GPSs to range finders. You name it, uh, we give the opportunity for you to test it. And this week, we've got a good opportunity for testers. Tony, what do we got this week? Um, Max Fly Tour and Tour X Golf Balls for uh, 12 testers will be selected for this one. Okay. Those balls did pretty well in our test. Um, what's the feature on those, like center of gravity? Yeah, so center of gravity balanced is what they're calling it. So basically, look, it's... Uh, it's it's an interesting acknowledgement of the fact that you know golf balls are not perfect, which we know, right? We are, we are very aware at this point that nobody makes a perfect golf ball 100% of the time, and so as a kind of a last step in the project, project, uh, production, there's the word I'm looking for. As a last step in the production, they essentially run it through a machine that that does something similar to what a check go or check go pro device does so kind of kind of spins the ball really fast and identifies kind of the, the best balance point and puts the stamp on that line so that you know the ball is is going to roll through or not fly wildly offline when when it's aligned in that position now uh works great on the putting green works great off the tee you know in between you're you're kind of at the mercy of, of how it how it lands as with any other golf ball, but the idea is you can gives you the opportunity to more ideally orient your golf ball for each shot. So kind of cool little feature uh, will be really interesting for, for golfers to, to kind of find ways to test that feature, maybe on the putting green, maybe off the tee and see if they can figure out if there's any validity to it at all. So cool opportunity, 12 testers, max fly tour and tour X golf balls. There you go. So check it out on mygolfspy.com on Friday. All right. How we're going to end this show is Tony is going to give you his own most wanted recommendation. Tony, what do you got for uh, everybody out there? Most wanted recommendation? Yeah, for paper. Paper mill, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Hammer mill, 91, 92 brightness, five for nineteen ninety nine at Staples right now if you need paper. That's, that's, yeah, that's all I got, guys. Tony was so excited <laughs> when we started this show that he got a year's worth of paper for twenty dollars. So staples. Years, um, no, five reams. That that paper. I I may be dead before that paper <laughs> is exhausted. All right, we've lost lost twenty five percent of our readers. And he's been <laughs> and he's even experimenting. Find it, cut it with the ninety two to see if it's better than the eighty eight. So everybody <laughs> out there, go to Staples and get a lifetime supply of paper and. Um, <laughs> Go over to Costco, five gallons of mayonnaise, and maybe pick up a dozen golf balls. Actually, two, two for one over there right now. You're not finding, yeah, you're not going to find them for October fifteenth, right? I think is the the next shipment is expected to be available. In the meantime, keep sending us pictures of all the balls you're testing, the Kirklands, the whatever. Find it, cut it, still going down. So uh, let us know. And and that is that is the beauty of the new Kirkland golf ball. No special tools, tools required. You can cut it with the golf clubs you already have. <laughs> wow. All right. That's end of episode 16 of no putts given. Harry looks like you're having a, a busy time over here with the right phone. Now. So we're going to let him get to it until next time we out. Bye.